Welcome my dear learners for this course on finite element analysis. In our module 4 we were discussing about analysis of heat transfer problems and fluid flow through porous medium. In this final lecture, lecture number 10, I will be solving two more problems on analysis of flow through porous medium. Our problem 2 on discussion of flow through porous medium states that for the smooth pipe shown in figure with uniform cross section area of 1 meter square determine the flow velocities in each element knowing the velocity at the left is 2 meter per second and velocity potential at right end is P3 set to 0 let us solve this problem coming for step 1 finite element model I can model this problem with 3 nodes and 2 elements that is node number 1 node number 2 and node number 3 the length of each element is 10 meters I should calculate velocity potential at node number 1 velocity potential at node number 2 velocity potential at node number 3 is given which is set to 0 we have element 1 and element 2 moving on to step 2 that is element stiffness matrix the general formula for element stiffness matrix in analysis of flow through porous medium is given by area of the element permeability of the element divided by length of the element 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 for element 1 the cross section area is unity since we are solving problem on flow through pipe the permeability is unity length of element 1 is 10 and we have 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 so if I solve I will get the value as 1 by 10 times 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 since this is an uniform cross sectional smooth pipe the element thickness matrix for element 2 is also same as element 1 because cross section area permeability and length are same so therefore the element thickness matrix for element 2 is 1 by 10 of 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 now moving on to step 3 to find global stiffness matrix the rule to obtain the global stiffness matrix is same as what we have followed to obtain the global stiffness matrix in case of analysis of pass analysis of torsions of shaft and analysis of heat transfer problems that is i should add k11 of element 2 to the k22 of element 1 if i do that i will get k is equal to let us take 1 by 10 common for element 1 we have 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 if I add k11 of element 2 to k22 of element 1 I will get 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 minus 1 minus 1 1 now fill the unfilled positions with zeros so this completes the global stiffness matrix for the given problem moving on to step 4 element load vector if you look at element 1 we have fluid entering the element 1 with a velocity of 2 meters per second so therefore for element 1 we have load due to velocity which is given by area times velocity and 0 if it is moving out I should take it as negative if the fluid is entering the element I should take it as positive so if I substitute the values I will get area is 1 velocity is 2 meters per second and 0 which gives us the value as 2 and 0 this is at node number 1 and this is at node number 2 and the unit is meter cube per second this is the unit of load vector coming for element 2 we don't have any velocities moving out or coming into the element so therefore the value will set to zeros node number 2 and node number 3 so now moving for step 5 to find the global load vector and also if you clearly observe there is no internal volumetric flow rate generation inside the pipe so therefore the second element load vector which we should verify that is internal volumetric flow rate is also zero so the global load vector that is f 
is equal to at node 1 we have value 2 at node 2 it is 0 at node 3 also it is 0 unit is meter cube per second next moving on to step 6 that is equilibrium equation and application of boundary condition the equilibrium equation is k matrix into q matrix is equal to global load vector the global stiffness matrix is 1 by 10 common 1 minus 1 minus 1 2 minus 1 minus 1 and plus 1 zeros on the unfilled positions now the nodal variables for this problem are p1 p2 and p3 velocity potentials is equal to the load vector load at node 1 is 2 meter cube per second at node 2 it is 0 and at node 3 also it is 0 now the boundary condition for the problem is given as velocity potential at node 3 is set to 0 now eliminate corresponding row and column with respect to P3 that is third row and third column is eliminated now if you clearly observe the velocity potential is set to 0 so no need to multiply these two terms to the corresponding element and take it to RHS since the boundary condition is set to 0 just note down the values what is left out and solve to get the correct answer that is I will get 1 by 10 from elimination method of handling the boundary condition I have noted down the values what is left out if you want to practice the actual method multiply in these two rows the column which you should get rid of with the corresponding term in the matrix B and take it to right hand side if I do that in these two rows I should get rid of 0 and minus 1 so therefore multiply 0 with the corresponding element in matrix B you will get multiplied with P3 taking it to RSS I will get 0 times P3 in this row I have minus 1 it will get multiplied with P3 take it to right hand side I will get plus 1 into P3 since P3 is 0 it does not have any effect on the answer what we are going to get so now solving this with equations with two unknowns I will get the answer as velocity potential P1 is equal to 40 meter square per second and velocity potential P2 is equal to 20 meter square per second velocity potential P3 is given which is 0 so this completes the nodal variables that is velocity potentials moving for the final quantity of interest what he has asked to calculate the flow velocity in each element we know that the flow velocity is given by V of any element is equal to minus strain displacement matrix times the nodal variables that is equal to minus of minus 1 by length of the element plus 1 by length of the element times velocity potential of initial node velocity potential of final node if I solve for element 1 velocity of element 1 is equal to minus of minus 1 by 10 plus 1 by 10 for element 1 the node numbers are 1 and 2 so therefore P1 is 40 P2 is 20 so you will get the velocity of element 1 as 2 meters per second itself next moving for element 2 the velocity of element 2 is equal to minus of minus 1 by 10 plus 1 by 10 the node numbers for element 2 are node number 2 and node number 3 so therefore P2 is 20 and P3 is 0 so substituting the values 20 and 0 if I saw I will get velocity V2 is also equal to 2 meters per second this is the solution for the given problem wherein which we have calculated the velocity potentials at node number 1 and node number 2 which is 40 and 20 meters square per second respectively and the velocities at element 1 and element 2 are 2 meters per second itself. 
Let us quickly solve one more problem on analysis of fluid flow through porous medium. Problem number 3 of our discussion on analysis of fluid flow through porous medium states that the fluid head distribution along the length of the coarse gravel medium is shown in the figure. Calculate the velocity in the upper part and also the volumetric flow rate in the upper part. The velocity potential at the top is 10 meter square per second and that at the bottom is 1 meter square per second. The permeability coefficient is kx is equal to 0.5. Assume a cross sectional area of 1 meter square. Take 3 element of equal length for modeling. Since he himself has stated that take 3 elements of equal length for modeling. Moving on to solve this problem. Step 1. Finite element model. Now model this gravel with three elements of equal length. I will get four nodes. Node 1, node 2, node 3 and node 4. The velocity potentials are P1, P2, P3 and P4. Since I should take the equal length for each element, the elemental length will be 10 meters each and we have 3 elements. This completes the finite element model for the given problem. Moving on to step 2, element stiffness matrix. The general formula for element stiffness matrix is given by A K by L 1 minus 1 minus 1 1. Now, for element 1, we have the cross sectional area is yes, informed to take as 1 meter square. The permeability is 0 0.5, length of the element is 10, which gives us 1 by 20 as common 1 minus 1 minus 1 1. Now, if you clearly observe the values of cross sectional area, permeability and length remain same for both element 2 and element 3. So therefore, the element stiffness matrix for element 2 and also for element 3 are same as element 1. That is, for element 2 also, the element stiffness matrix will be 1 by 20, 1 minus 1, minus 1, 1. And also for element 3, the element stiffness matrix will be 1 by 20, 1 minus 1 minus 1 1. So this completes step 2 element stiffness matrix. Now moving on to step 3 to obtain the global stiffness matrix. It is clear that the order of the global stiffness matrix is 4 cross 4 because we have 4 nodes. Following the procedure to obtain the global stiffness matrix, I should add k11 of element 2 to k22 of element 1. Similarly, K11 of element 3 should be added to K22 of element 2 and so on. So if I use the procedure, I will get the global stiffness matrix of order n cross n which is nothing but 4 cross 4 because n is number of nodes. I will take 1 by 20 common. For element 1, we have 1 minus 1 minus 1 1. If I add K11 of element 2, to k22 of element 1, I will get it as 2 minus 1 minus 1 1. Now I should add k11 of element 3 to k22 of element 2. If I add 1 plus 1 will become 2 minus 1 minus 1 1. So this completes the global stiffness matrix. Fill the unfilled position with zeros. Now moving on to our Step 4, element load vector. This problem does not contain any internal volumetric flow rate generation. So therefore, no internal volume flow rate. And also, fluid is not entering or leaving. There is no boundary condition of flux for this problem. So therefore, no velocity load vector. Therefore, the step 5 global load vector will become 0. That is, F is equal to 
At node 1 we have 0, node 2 is also 0, node 3 is also 0 and node 4 is also 0. Unit is meter cube per second. This completes the global load vector. Next, moving on to step 6, that is equilibrium equation and application of boundary condition. Equilibrium equation is given by K matrix into Q matrix is equal to F. The global surface matrix is computed in step number 3, which is given by 1 by 20 as common. We have 1, minus 1, minus 1, 2, minus 1, minus 1, 2, minus 1, minus 1, 1. Fill the unfilled position with zeros and Q matrix is velocity potentials at node 1, node 2, node 3 and node 4 is equal to the global load vector since we don't have any load it is equated to 0. Now the boundary condition for this problem is the velocity potential at node 1 is known to us which is 10 meter square per second and also at node 4 we have 1 meter square per second. So using elimination method of handling the boundary condition eliminate row and column corresponding to P1 that is eliminate first row and first column also eliminate row and column corresponding to P4 that is eliminate fourth row and fourth column. Now as per the elimination method of handling the boundary condition in these two rows I should get rid of these two elements in the first column and these two elements in the fourth column. So therefore multiply these two elements with the corresponding term in the matrix B and take it to right hand side and also multiply these two elements with the corresponding term in matrix B and take it to right hand side. These two terms will get multiplied with P1 whereas these two terms will get multiplied with P4. Therefore, first I will send this 20 to RHS. So, 0 into anything will become 0. So, the remaining matrix which is left out by applying the boundary condition will be this element will be multiplied with P1. Take it to right hand side will become plus P1 is 10 which will become 1 into 10 and this element will be multiplied with P4 in the second row. So therefore, take it to RHS, it will become minus 0 into P4 is 1. Similarly, in the third row, 0 will be multiplied with P1. Take it to right hand side, 0 into 10 and minus 1 will be multiplied with P4. Take it to right hand side, it will become plus 1 into 1. So this is the matrix what I get after applying the elimination method of handling the boundary condition. Initially itself, we multiply this 20 to RHS and get rid of this 1 by 20 and then apply the boundary condition properly. Now, solving this matrix by choosing two equations with two unknowns in the calculator, I will get the value of P2 and P3 as P2 is 7 meter square per second and P3 is 4 meter square per second. Second. So this completes the velocity potentials what he has asked. Now he has asked us to calculate the velocity and volumetric flow rate at the upper part. As we know the velocity is given by minus of strain displacement matrix into Q which is nothing but minus of minus 1 by Le 1 by Le velocity potential of initial node, velocity potential of final node. For the upper part, we have element 1, the node numbers are 1 and 2. So therefore, the substituting the values, the velocity at upper part, that is for element 1, is equal to minus 1 by 10, plus 1 by 10. P initial, P initial is P1, which is given as 10, and P final is P2, which is obtained as 7. So, solving which I will get velocity at the upper part 
that is for element 1 as 0 0.3 meters per second. Now coming for volumetric flow rate of upper part Q is equal to area times velocity cross section area is 1 velocity is 0 0.3 which gives us 0 0.3 meter cube per second. If you clearly observe the material property and the cross section area are same for all the elements. So therefore since material property and cross sectional area are same therefore velocity of element 1 is equal to velocity of element 2 is equal to velocity of element 3 which are all equal to 0 0.3 meter per second coming for volumetric flow rate it is constant so therefore q1 is equal to q2 is equal to q3 which is equal to 0 0.3 meter cube per second so this is the complete solution for the given problem where in which we have calculated the velocity potentials at node number 2 and node number 3 and also the velocities of element 1, 2, 3 and volumetric flow rate of element 1, 2 and 3. This completes the given problem and also our discussion on module 4 that is analysis of heat transfer and fluid flow problems. From next lecture we will be heading to module 5 where in which we will be discussing on dynamic considerations and also axisymmetric problems. That's all from this lecture. Thank you.